God is saying to his chosen ones, arise and go forth for he has crowned you with his light and glory. God says to his chosen ones, arise and go forth, for he has crowned you with his light and glory. Hey you guys, it's Pastor Dawn. I have a prophetic word um, that is extremely detailed, but before I get into that prophetic word uh, publicly, I just wanna say thank you. In the last couple of weeks, we've had a ton of new subscribers on the channel, and I wanna say welcome to each and every one of you. Thank you for subscribing. We've had a ton of praise reports and just encouraging words, and uh, so many people have sown faith seeds into the ministry, and I just publicly want to say thank you. I want you to know that anytime that you send me a prayer request, even if I'm not able to respond to each and every one of them, I do personally pray over each and every one of them. And every time you sow any type of financial seed, gift, or faith offering into the ministry, I pray over every single one of them that God would multiply it 30, 60, 100, even a thousand fold back unto you, and that you would be blessed physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, financially, relationally, in abundance. So I just want to say thank you for just the show of support uh, in the last couple of weeks. All right, I want to get into this prophetic word. It is a little bit lengthy and it's extremely detailed. And not every prophetic word is for every person. So you will know if this is for you in many ways because there will be several parts of it that truly resonate with you or God has already been saying to you. And just so you know, nine times out of 10, prophecy is usually always a confirmation of what God has already said to you. And it's always founded in scripture. Um, uh, the only other time that it is different than confirmation is when it is predicting future events. But other than that, almost all prophecy is already confirming what God has already spoken to you. And he is putting the exclamation point on it. And he's just letting you know that he's saying it again. All right. Okay. So God says, <clears throat> God says to his chosen ones, he says, I have released you to go forth, be who I've called you to be, do what I've called you to do and carry my light and glory everywhere you go. God says, you are ready. Yes, you are. Stop arguing with God. You are ready. <laughs> He's already announced you in the heavenlies. He's already crowned you with glory and honor. I want to give you a quick scripture. Psalm 8 and verse 5. Psalm 8 and verse 5. And I am reading from the King James Version. And it says... For you have made him, he's talking about mankind, men and women, his, his chosen son and daughters. You have made him a little lower than the angels and you have crowned him with glory and honor. So if you look up, uh, so that word crowned, it means that we are surrounded by, and I looked up the Strong's Concord's definition of glory and honor, and it means abundance, honor, majesty, riches, wealth, favor, protection, dignity, splendor, and holiness. So God says he's already crowned you with this and he simply wants you to go forth in the assignment or the assignments that he has assigned to you, all right? And so I, I could feel that many of us have been arguing with God or wrestling with God saying, I'm not ready. Like it was as if I could see that there were many that were afraid, timid, shy about stepping forth into this new season. Kind of like Moses, when Moses argue, argued with God and he's like, God, I can't talk good. Like, I, I'm a stammerer. I'm a stutterer. And basically, God was like, I don't care. I need you to do what I ask you to do. He's like, just go forth and take your brother Aaron. All right. So God says, arise and go forth and carry my light and glory. God says there are new opportunities and new or more open doors are being opened unto you. They're being presented to you, says God. And I thought it was interesting that he said presented. So you are not going to have to break down or kick down open doors. When it is God's season for you, that a lot of times they're going to come to you, if that makes sense. All right. So he says new doors and new opportunities and open doors are being presented to you. He says, don't say yes to every offer, but use discretion and walk by my spirit. God also said, he goes, I'm leading you into complete deliverance from everything that has held you captive in the past. And the sense that I got is that God has done a lot of healing and deliverance in your life. But maybe there are some, just some residuals and God is saying that he is bringing that to a, a finality and to a close. Okay. 
So God says, you have been commissioned and you have re been released to go forth and break into new territory and take dominion for my name's sake, says the Lord. If you go back to Genesis, when God created mankind, it said that, it says, let us create man in our image, in our likeness. And he says, and let them have dominion. And so what dominion means is that as we go about our day-to-day -day life and we are walking out the assignments and the callings of God on our life, we are literally, by, by way of listening to the Holy Spirit and in our intimate relationship with God, we are executing the will of God in the earth and taking territory and dominion for his namesake. And God is saying that it is time for you to get to it. Um, some of you have been at the cave of Adullam for too long. I don't have that scripture reference with me, but it's somewhere in the Old Testament. And it's where David um, David was at the cave of Adullam or Adullam. You can look it up. And God said it was time for him to come forth. And so for many of you, that is true. All right. So I want us to turn to Psalm 105, verse 37. Psalm 105, verse 37. Where did it go? There it is. Okay. All right, Psalm 105, verse 37. So this is where um, God was bringing the Israelites out of Egypt. And in verse 37, it says, And he brought them forth um, with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. Okay, so the first thing I want you to see is that God did the bringing forth. You're not going to have to kick down any doors or open any doors for you. If it is your season to step into this, God is opening the doors for you. Uh, it says God brought them forth. That I looked it up in the King James, uh, in the Strong's Concordance, and it means to expand, to germinate, to plant. And then as a result of that expansion and planting and germinating, it means bearing fruit, okay? And it says that God brought them forth. He, he, he liberated them from their place of slavery or bondage or being in strongholds, right? And they were laden with the silver and gold of Egypt. You guys, when God calls you into that which he has anointed you for, there will be financial provision for it. Now it's your job to walk in faith and to continue confessing it and to continue believing God for it um, and continue sowing into it. But the fight, it is God's responsibility to fund the provision for his vision if you're really walking in his vision, okay? All right, and it says that they came forth with silver and gold. And then it says, and not one was feeble among them. And so I believe that God is bringing forth um, a healing in so many different areas of our lives so that we are fully prepared to step into what God has for us. Okay, next part. <clears throat> God says, I am moving. He says, I am moving my anointed ones into place like pieces on a chessboard. Um, in the description of this video, I'm going to reference a video that I recorded maybe five, six, seven months ago, and it's called Ichabod Structures Dismantled. Ichabod Structures Dismantled. I want you to watch that video. But anyway, um, several years ago, maybe 10 or more years ago, um, I had released a couple of prophetic words about the changing of the guard. I could see like in the spirit realm, so to speak, that there was going to be a season when many leaders in the body of Christ, like there was just a changing of the guard. And I didn't really realize how significant it was. And I only talked about it a little bit, but in the, um, in the video, Ichabod Structures Dismantled, I talked about the changing of the guard again. And so this is something that has actually been going on for the last couple of years, but it's continuing to go on until God gets those that he wants into position, into position, okay? All right, so God says, I am moving my anointed ones into place like pieces on a chessboard. I am deposing many leaders from their positions of honor for they have not been honorable. God says, I'm getting my army and generals and commanders into rightful place as the stage is set for end time wars, end times war. And I was sensing he was talking about the spiritual battle between good and evil that has already started, although it could extend to other things. I want to take us to Isaiah 20, 22, starting in verse 20. Isaiah 22, starting in verse 20. And it says, and it shall come to pass in that day that I will call my servant Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah. I'm probably not pronouncing it right, but anyway. Um, it says, uh, and I will clothe him with your robe. He says, and I will strengthen him with your girdle. And so basically God is giving Eliakim the, the um, 
the position and the authority of another leader, okay? And he says, um, he says, and I will commit your government into his hand and he shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. And the key of the house of David, I will lay upon his shoulders. And so whatever he opens, no one can shut and whatever he shuts, no one can open. And I will fasten him like a nail into a sure place and he shall be for a glorious th throne unto his father's house. All right, so when God is saying that he is deposing many leaders and he's moving his chosen ones, the changing of the guard into place. Like that's exactly what is happening. And so um, God says many of those that I am setting into position, this one kind of shocked me. Some of them will remain there until the end of the age. So I'm thinking maybe they're really young. I don't know. But anyway, um, he says, as long as their hearts remain true and holy before me. I was like, whoa. Okay. Then God said, the great wealth transfer has already begun for some. And he says, and while others, he goes, are still in preparation for it. I'm going to read that again. God says, the great wealth transfer has already begun for some individuals. But he says, there are others that he is still preparing for their portion. And this goes along with the other scripture that I was reading that God brought them out of captivity. He was taking them to their promised land and he did so by his provision, right? And so God was saying that great wars and battles in the spiritual realm will be fought over the control of money. Actually, that's already true today, but anyway. Um, God says, but my bride who are faithful to me, they will have more than enough. He says, I have been preparing many hearts to be conduits of great wealth so that my people will be cared for in times of drought and famine. And I'm going to be honest, you guys, I sense that this was not a spiritual drought or famine, that this was a real thing that's going to be happening, I don't know, next 5, 10, 20 years, I don't know. God says, I will cause physical rain and spiritual rain to fall on the lands of my people whose hearts are true to me. Physical and Physically and spiritually, my people will lack no good thing, although there will, although there will be great want and need throughout the earth. And um, that one was, was kind of hard for me to write down because I could, I could feel the gravity of it, if that makes sense. Okay, let's go to, um, I'm going to pause. Uh, let's go to Joel chapter 2, verse 23. All right. And it says... It says, be, be glad then, you children of Zion. Um, my camera's doing something weird. And rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the former rains moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rains, the former rains and the latter rains. And so, um, and then it talks about the floors of, of wheat being full and the vats overflowing with wine and new oil. And so this, this is talking about provisions. And so as this was written to an agrarian society, God was speaking in their language because to them, that's what monetary increase looked like, okay? If we go to Hosea chapter six and verse three, it says, then, uh, then shall we know if we follow um, on to know the Lord, he is going forth and he is preparing as the morning and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and the former rains in the earth. And then Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 14. And you guys, I will link all of these verses in the, um, in the description. And it says that I will give you the rain of your land in due season. So you guys, in due season, you will you will reap a harvest. I'm going to speak about that in just a minute. Um, the, the former rains and the latter rains, that you may gather your corn and gather your wine and oil. And that just means gathering in what you need. Okay. God says, the hands that hold the majority of wealth in the land right now belong to ungodly hands and ungodly hearts. The majority of the wealth in the earth should be in the hands of God's people. For whoever holds the money holds the power of a nation and thereby directs the course of that nation politically, morally, religiously, in lawmaking and everything. But God says that I am raising up voices in the land that will, um, that will begin to call forth his, his light and his glory learning how to operate on God's 
um, economic system, his the way that God operates um, providing um, several years ago was a difficult process for me to learn. And I went through several years of honestly having barely enough every single day. But miraculously, it was kind of like I was walking through the wilderness and I was receiving manna that I needed for that day. And I'm not going to say that it was an easy season. I'm not going to say that God is going to make you learn his economic system the way that he made me learn it. So I'm not, I'm not suggesting that. But what I am saying is that even though it was a difficult season for me to walk in, I began to understand how God provides. And I'm not going to do a teaching right here, but just one scripture is it says, Give and it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men and women give unto your bosom. Okay. And so I came to learn through a long process that was somewhat painful. I began to understand that if I would give when God said give, that He would make certain that I had everything that I had need of. And, um, so God is not going to give you or me or anyone extraordinary riches, even for the assignment that he's given to us. He's not going to give us extraordinary rich, riches until we first learn how to develop a giving heart like his. That's, we have to develop his character and nature first. Because if we don't develop that giving nature, what happens is when he does release, when he does release it to us, we will mess it up. We'll either hoard it up for ourselves, we'll spend it on idols, or we just won't sow it into the kingdom. Like we will waste it. And God doesn't desire that. And so this uh, this prophetic word really isn't about money, but supernatural provision for your assignment, for the things that God has called you to do is a necessity for you to, to walk out uh, what this prophetic word is talking about, which is you arise like you getting up out of that place of complacency you getting up out of that place of anxiety or fear you getting up out of that place of being timid and shy and going forth in what god has called you to go forth in and you may not have what you may not have like six months of what you need but god will give you enough for the next two days for the next two weeks for the next two months and you're just going to have to keep stepping forth and being obedient and doing what he asks at each step and i promise the rest of it will fall into place all right you guys so if this word is for you then i need you to get into the comments and i need you to say i will arise and go forth crowned in his light and glory i will arise and go forth crowned in his light and glory all right, you guys, just a couple of things. Number one, all of the scriptures are in the description of this uh, video. If you feel led to sow into this particular word or into the, the ministry of this channel, all of the giving links are there. We accept Cash App, PayPal, Zelle. Uh, you can mail in a donation. That information that is there, if you're international, there's an international link. Or you can just go to my website at dawnchurchill.org and um, we accept credit cards and debit cards. So you can, can sow uh, your faith seeds and your love offerings there. If you have a praise report or a prayer request, will you please email me at dawnchurchillministries at gmail.com. Again, if this word was for you, get into the comments and say, I will arise and go forth crowned with his light and glory. And I'm just going to close in a quick word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, even though this is kind of a long word, I thank you that you are causing this video to fall upon the eyes and ears of each and every person who's supposed to hear it on the exact day and the exact moment and the exact hour that you have designed for them to receive it. I pray, Father God, that it will give them the impetus, the encouragement. I thank you, Father God, that you've already been speaking this to them anyway. And so, Lord, I thank you that this will just be one more confirmation of you just putting that exclamation point on their calling, your, that exclamation point on the assignment that you have given them to do. And Lord, that you are telling them, arise, go forth. They are all, you have already commissioned them. You have already prepared them and they are at least prepared with whatever it is that they need for the next two days, two weeks, or two months. And you simply want them to step forth. So in the name of Jesus, Father God, I thank you for causing them to arise and go forth and be consciously aware that by your grace, you have crowned them with your light and glory. And you want them to carry your light and your grace and your compassion and your mercy and your healing and your deliverance into every sphere of influence that they have. And I pray that over them right now in Jesus' name.